Counselor Accents Podcast. Two school counselors who love their jobs. Oh, and they happen to have Southern accents too. Bless their hearts. Welcome. I'm Laura. I am Kim. And together we are Counselor Accents. And it's our weekly podcast. It is our weekly podcast, and I can't help but notice that we're both wearing a cow neck. Not planned. Not planned, Just and we got the hair with the swoop bang. Going the opposite and way. going the opposite way. She got a high bun, and I got a low bun, and I will have to tell you, it is because we're in a flood state of an emergency. I heard they put this, we're in a state really? of emergency. Because that's how much rain is happening, and it's that's crazy. why we look like. And my hair will go back down to normal in March. But until you then, you will see a better looking Laura in March. Until then, this is the this February is look. Yeah. Okay. This is just a February look. Yeah. All what right. are we talking about today, Laura? Well, uh, we are going to talk about classroom management. And the reason why we're going to talk about classroom management is a lot of counselors have not had any training on classroom management. Now, you and I went very different routes right. to become school counselors. Yes. You went the way of school teacher? Yes, I did. I have never taught a day in a classroom in my you, life. You went rogue. I went rogue. I was I majored in business administration and then thought, you know what? You know would be fun. I think to be a school counselor would be fun. <laughs> so here I am living. Here you the dream. are living making the money now. That's <laughs> what I think. You know. Them. Why would you work at a bank when you can no. work as a school counselor? No, yeah. Um, so I had no training in classroom management, and it is one of the most asked questions. What do I do? So yeah, and not that we have all the answers, no. but we want to have a conversation with our sisters and brothers in the counseling world, and uh, that's what we're going to do today. And so um, one of the things that we know is um, being prepared. Be prepared. Yes. I feel like that's in Lion King, is it? Be prepared. It's in be, a Disney. I have to movie. be honest with you. I have not ever seen Lion King all the way through. Well, I think it is, but I could be wrong. I can't So, um being prepared is the first thing. And what what comes to mind when I say, be prepared, Laura? Well, now Lion King. Okay. But, but before then, that, <laughs> it was, it was uh, over plan. I always try to make sure when a class comes in that I have everything ready. Copies are made. I have them counted out. I know exactly how many things. I even have things out on the tables if they're going to, like, with K through two, I've been using whiteboards, mm -hmm. and so I've had them out on the table, so I don't have to take time to pass them out and all that stuff. So okay. they're already out. So um, we know that any downtime is when students are going to act out, cause you know behavior issues. Right. So what's the saying about idle hands? Are the devil's handiwork? Well, I think that's proven Did true. Did I just make that up? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's true okay. in the classroom. Idle hands are the devil's handiwork in the classroom. Okay. I, I, I think that's <laughs> that was a stretch. stretch. Okay. So we don't want to waste any time. And, and one of the things is having, every, like you said, having everything ready. Mm -hmm. But I know a lot of counselors don't have the luxury. I have a classroom of my very own. And a lot of the counselors that we have talked to in the past are, are stuck they're traveling. They're traveling with their little, you know, and that makes it harder. I'm going to be honest because it needs the aesthetics matter. Do are my materials ready? It is does this look like an area that we're going to get busy in, or uh, while relaxed, or does it look like it's just a chaotic mess? Yeah. That sends a message to the students. So when you are have your place that you are meeting, all of your things are laid out. You are over prepared. You are not wasting time. You are going to cut down on so much of your behavior issues. Very good. Yeah. So give us another tip of what you do with your, I know you've told me before that you used a stuffed animal in yes. helping you with your behavior. Yeah, this works really well for K through 2. I will carry a little stuffed animal around with me. It doesn't have to be. It's actually a little puppet, a little dog puppet. But when they come into my class, the very first thing I tell them is, this is my little puppy friend, and he is going to be watching for the quietest table. And then I'll make him whisper in my ear, 
and then I go and put him on a table. And when I say he's looking for the quietest table, it is like they snap to attention. Like all of a sudden they're like, <gasps> and they just sit there quietly. And so then I go and put him, and I'm going to give you a little trick. I put him at what I know is going to be the trouble table. I put him there first. Two reasons. Number one, it's going to encourage those kids, like beforehand, hey, you know, make them feel like they have achieved something. But then secondly, they may not get a chance after class starts to have him at the table. So then we've already, I try to make him jump to every table. Yes. And so we've knocked that one out. So anyway, Good. and then, yeah. yeah, I'll pick him up. Like if, especially if the kids start talking through the lesson, then I just walk over to the table and I pick him up and make him whisper in my ear again. And I say, now he, he's saying that this doesn't mean that y'all aren't still being quiet. He just is going to go sit at another quiet table. And then they go, and they came up with this rule on their own. They said, oh, you can't touch the puppet. Every one of my classes says, you can't touch him or he'll lose his magic. So thank you, Elf on the Shelf. <laughs> but they think they can't there touch him. There you go. Him. And I you may have them. just invented a new product. It's Puppy on the Table. Okay. Not Elf on the Shelf. But, yeah. Or maybe Puppy on a Shelf. Or anything on a shelf. Yeah. Okay, I like that because mm -hmm. that's practical. Yeah. It's something that we know is going to work with the littles. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you may be thinking, well, I don't have tables. I'm in a classroom. Okay, just move him from desk to desk or person to person if they mm -hmm. sit on the floor. Mm -hmm. Just take that and make it your own. Okay, so a biggie is for students to know what's expected mm -hmm. of them. And that comes with a lot of practice and repetition. And you have to know what you expect. Absolutely. You have to know what's important to you. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of establish that beforehand because it you set the tone. And I know you may be you know hearing this later in your school year, but you set the tone for what the rest of the time with you is going to be. So you want to be really careful in setting the tone of this is what this and letting them know what is expected of them. I think that's in a regular classroom and it's in, in for a counselor. When we go into the classroom, when I even go, I, I have them come to me. But if I go into another teacher's classroom, I don't expect that other teacher to, to be over the behavior. I'm in charge of the behavior. Yeah. And I will start off with my rules, which they know. Right. You know, so um, we go over our rules. Uh, which may be a little bit different than the teacher's rules. But if I go into that classroom, they know this is Miss Crumley's rules and they know what ex is expected of them. Well, you're smart to do that too because once you deflect to someone else for... You lose some credibility. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, that's important. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. like with my rules, <clears throat> you have yours posted. Mm -hmm. So it's a visual for them to see, mm -hmm. which is great. Mm -hmm. And I have not posted mine, but I need to. Yeah. Um, but I do repeat them every every time I get the students, even if I know they can recite them. Yeah. I repeat them, and I have four because I wanted to keep it simple. And I thought, what are the things that are important to me? Number one, please don't talk when I'm talking. Number two, please don't talk when your classmates are talking. And I say this so they'll understand why. I say mm -hmm. everything that you have to say is important. And if you're talking when your classmates are talking, I can't hear everybody, and I want to make sure I hear what you say. And then rule number three, I have art boxes in the center of my table, so I say please don't touch the art boxes until I tell you to. Otherwise, they're foraging in them yeah. like a badger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then rule number four is please don't get out of your seat unless I tell you to. So later in the year, the kids start saying, oh, that's rule number two. You're mm -hmm. violating mm -hmm. rule number two. And they start correcting each other, so I'm not even having to do it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's good. And uh, I have the up the up rules, look up, sit up, zip up, hand up, listen up. And the kids actually, a kid gets up every time and leads the rules. And so um, I don't know if we still have the video of my kids doing that. I've seen it. If we find it, we'll we'll add it on here. But it's they handle the rules. They know the rules after they learn them. So they'll it's it's kind of a military. It's fun, but it's kind of a military sit up. Did you hear me? And if it's a girl, it's yes, ma'am. Repeat it. Sit up. Look up. Did you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Repeat it. Look up. And then when they do the zip up, it. Now, um, 
so knowing what is what is expected of them and and I have been a counselor K through 12 and in fact in the high school setting the only way I could see all of my students would either be the entire ninth grade or the entire high school Woo. but yet if you are well planned and you um, and it, especially in the high school the effort that I would go to to make sure that that it was going to be engaging and that if I had a guest speaker that they were engaging um, that everything that the kids would enjoy it but and that would follow the same pattern um, you know I've told you before we followed the pattern in high school of like the tonight show yeah or, or one of the night late night shows where we had the band that would be playing we'd have our guest speaker which might be somebody from a career thing and then we engage the students every time that's great uh, but now in that situation I did I would get support if, you, if I'm gonna do the entire high school if I had a, an entire grade um, then you know I, that was a little bit easier to handle but I'd probably pull one of the grade level teachers and some of the time every month with the I would meet with all of the girls and um, the boys would meet separately uh, because I, there was two two counselors at that school so I've done every grade and, and to me the hardest grade for discipline is if I and I, it's never been overwhelming any of it but I think middle school mm -hmm. um, but that's why that's why with middle school you really really have to be ready when you're going in and make sure that it's engaging and that that um, the tail is not wagging the dog yeah. you know you're in control and you need to have something in place if it goes awry and you have a student who is taking charge yeah you know if you've got a student that's taking charge you need to have a plan in place whatever that is so yeah. to put you on the spot what is an example of a plan if you were in that situation I have only one time in that I can remember and I was proactive and it was with a middle schooler and I love this child so much but by the afternoon her ADHD is it's just all out of control and so I have had to pull advisory groups during that time and I've been proactive knowing that I'm not going to get anything that I need to get to these students in them so I've actually placed her with a student that needed help somewhere else you gave her a job I gave her a job okay. and, and that's and I hate to eat but now this is not a student that I don't see and and haven't seen but if it's in the afternoon I try to be proactive but let's just say I have a student that's out of control you can't let that take up all of your time because mm -hmm. we don't have the kids that long so uh, it's never worked it's never not worked that you know you don't want to embarrass them but like you know just you know I, you're gonna you know I want you to be able to stay yeah but you know you may not be able to and we're, you know so that's not ever not worked but it could you know it, it might not mm -hmm. and I've told you I use a lot of these oh yeah I use a lot of tickets and um, they get one and I get one and then I can quietly walk over and get their ticket and if their ticket is pulled then they do not get a chance to get in the quiet seat box um, quiet seat box, quiet the prize box. Oh, why am I calling it quiet seat? The uh, prize box, and that is a big deal. And it is nothing but like stuff that I have picked up at McDonald's. You know, I mean anything, little books from Chick Fil A, anything I put in there. People give stuff. I'll just put it in there, and books. Oh, you know, everything goes in there, and so it's a quite a big box. And so sometimes I do three or three club. You know. And what ages do you use the quiet the prize box with? Uh, through sixth. Okay. Yep, through sixth grade, and you'd be surprised, and probably could through eighth. I'm going to be honest with you. Wow. I'm I, I mean, I'm box. serious. Uh, I, I did a lesson with my middle school. Mm -hmm. you, the pizza cat lesson. Hey, shake the table one more time, why don't you? You know I will. And this is what I made the middle schoolers wear. 
you know, I mean, we would take turns, you know, I would put it on, and they love. For those of you listening, the, the it's a giant pair of, of glasses. glasses. So, I guess my point is, I know that any age level, it, it, we're all at different age levels as counselors, but um, the main thing is be engaging and be prepared yeah. when you're dealing with kids. Um, that you that's that's that is going to take care of so much of your time management. Not, not a lot of downtime. Yeah. Not a lot of in between time. And let me tell you, when you pulled those tickets out, yeah. it is like my anxiety level went through the roof. I know. Something you need to know about me is I hate door prizes. If I'm given a ticket somewhere, I will lose that ticket. I have won, and she always wins. She always I always wins. always wins. So whoever has. Her ticket will win, and she. It doesn't matter if it's a cruise to Hawaii. I'm not. Somebody else is going to get, get it. it because oh my she's gosh! Not to get it. Woo! Okay. I don't know what it is, but, but right now you're having a panic I am. attack. Yeah. So if when you're in a in a group and they call out a number and nobody goes to get it, look for me. I may be in the room, just like not going to get the prize. Get her ticket because she will yeah. win. So Back tell us, what, yeah, you do so many practical things. Uh, so table signs. Tell me what you do with your table signs. Okay. I ordered these cute little table signs off of Amazon, and we I'll try to link them for you just in case you want to know what I get. But I just put them there. I think they're like wedding things that you would get at a wedding. But I put the sign on the table, and this helps for two reasons. Number one, when you have 300-plus students, you may not know everybody's name, even though I like to think that I do. Right. You may not. So I don't want to run the risk of calling somebody by the wrong name if they're talking. So um, I have a table sign, and whatever we're talking about that day, like when we did our um, Let's Talk About the Counselor mm -hmm, lesson, mm -hmm. I called one the nacho table, one the guacamole table. So then if that table is being too loud... I'm not calling a student out and singling them out saying, hey, you need to be quiet. I'm just saying, hey, my guacamole table needs to lower their voices just a little bit. Yes. And so it's a good way to control the classroom without yes. Yes. singling somebody out. That is such a great idea. It sounds like the kids would love love that name. Oh, they love that the creative sitting at the different table. And usually our lessons have a, a theme. We're big on puns. Yes, we are. So we, I get very punny with my table and names. And they're funny. Your they puns are, are funny. I'm a funny punny. So uh, another thing, <laughs> when you said that, it to my classroom, the students come in, and because I have this open floor, uh, I have mats that they sit on, yeah. like little rugs that they each have their own individual rugs, and um, I don't know if you could post that. On, yeah, from and Amazon. in fact, Those you can things look. Are, you can go to our blog and read about her zones. Yeah. And uh, the seating zone was one of them, or you called it something else. But we talked about the carpet squares and how wonderful they are for you. They are. They're, that, that gives them their space. That's where you're going to see it. Mm -hmm. so. uh, Wong, Harry, Harry Wong, Wong. Mm -hmm. who is a, who back, let me, this is how long this has been going on, his discipline. <laughs> What? I'm scared. <laughs> to be. Be scared. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway, he has a three-step approach um, to teaching classroom procedures. What is explain? Explain, explain, explain. Model, model, model. And I think I got that seriously since I was 21 years old. You know I'm 180. <laughs> I have his book of these, you know, uh, and I pull that out every year. <laughs> Demonstrate for students. Demonstrate what you want them to do. And if they come in into the into my classroom, and, and but at the very beginning of the year, they come in and we go back out. We come back in. We go back out until they're coming in the way I want them to come in. And they're, they've demonstrated it. I've modeled it. I've explained it. We've rehearsed it. We've practiced it. It's habit now. So my students do not have, uh, they don't have to wonder about what to do when they get to Ms. Crumbly's room. It is a habit that they have well established. So that talk, doesn't take up time. Talk about how you, like if you're doing a turn and talk. 
Talk about how you teach them and how you practice that. Yes, that's was, yes. huge. So, uh, if we do a lot of group discussions, and because sometimes I will have 40 kids, you know, at one time, and we go over, this is the voice that I want you to use. You think that's picking up on the microphone? This is the voice. And so we practice. Just practice that. And then I give them, we practice this as my signal for stop. She raises her hand if I'm you're raising listening. my hand. I forget. I know. And so they'll whisper a little bit. I raise my hand. We're practicing until, okay, now go. And they like that. And they understand. Yeah. You know, this is what is expected. I think, I think that teachers and counselors would cut down on so much discipline if they would just use that this explain mm -hmm. what it is and what why we're doing this it's important and this is how we're going to do it well and something else you said reminded me of in our um, conscious discipline training that our school just went through one of the speakers said there is a difference between be quiet and be silent and the students need to know what you expect if you want them to cease talking altogether then you better use the word silent mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. be quiet, they could whisper or they could talk softly and you're wanting silence or the teacher's wanting silence mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they're going to get mad. The teacher's going to get mad if they're yes, still talking. Yes, yes. So if you want it to be a silent classroom, say, okay, silent classroom or yes, whatever. Yes, yes. And, and so this is the same with teachers and uh, it's a tip that as a counselor we deal with with other teachers behavior issues right. because that kind of falls in our realm of wh why this behavior is this way so or what what we're doing what is that classroom what is the management what is the management system mm -hmm. is there a management system so not only do teachers need a management system but we need a clear management system we do so okay let's go into our picks let um, me the, oh, back you up oh there are two things I want to talk about. Okay. Number one is um, when we were going over our rules, and I, I do mine at the beginning of every lesson, and something I do is I am proactive from the mm -hmm. start, mm -hmm. and I say, guys, I'm just reviewing these so that we will know what the rules are, and I go ahead and say, I want to thank you right now for how perfect y'all are being, and I just kind of thank them in advance, and it sort of sets the stage and makes them think, oh. Yes. We we have we're we're doing good, and then they want to keep that level. Yes. And sometimes when I'm walking around, I'll be like, I cannot wait to tell your teacher how perfect you're being. Sometimes I even get out my video, or my phone, and I say, Okay, I'm going to video how good y'all are being, even if they're not being good. That sort of gets them in the gear. Mm -hmm. And I say, I'm going to video how good y'all are being because your teacher is going to be so proud. Yeah. And then, you know, it's just that being proactive and almost just kind of speaking it like it is and then speak it into being yes and how many of the classes are your absolute favorite i mean i will tell a class oh yeah the, you literally are my favorite class but do not tell anybody because i will deny me. it all that like my dad did until my sister and i were grown and we talked about it we realized oh, I mean, oh he told you that too that's funny because i really am my mom's favorite yeah um, okay, the second thing I want to do is I want to talk about when I take them back to their class. Because when I first started, I felt like they were running willy-nilly all over the hallway. Or it was hard to keep them in a line. So I do two things now. The first, with the younger ones, I'll tell them, okay, don't tell me with your mouth, but show me with your fingers what grade do you want to trick people into thinking you're in when we're walking down the hall and they'll always say fifth grade fifth grade except they show me with their hand and I always just pick second grade so I'll say okay I see a two we're gonna pretend like we're in second grade so how do you think second graders walk in the hall and they snap to attention with their finger on their lips and I say okay that's perfect and so then I'll tell somebody in the line that usually could be a troublemaker I'll say okay you are in charge of keeping account of how many people we trick in the hallway and then if I see a teacher, I'll be like, hey, call them second graders or something like that. And so then that little person's thrilled saying, hey, yeah. that's one, that's one. So anyway, and I'll take them back and I'll say, oh, here's your second grade class. And they just think it's the funniest thing. They're like, we tricked her. <laughs> I know it was my idea. And then when I have second grade, I always tell them, 
hey, when I have kindergarten, they always want to try to trick people into thinking they're second graders. And I said, so I'll ask them, how do you think second graders walk? And I said, what do you think they say? And then the second grade snaps to attention. And I say, that's exactly right. So then I tell them, I need you to do two things for me. First, I need you to walk like the kindergartners think that you walk because I don't want them to be disappointed if they see you and you're running all over the place. And so then they're like, okay, yeah, we'll do that. And then the second thing I ask them to do, I say, if you ever see me taking kindergarten or first grade back, I need you to tell me, oh my goodness, your second graders are being so good. I said, you will make their day and they will lose their marbles. And they're like, we'll do it, we'll do it. And they get so excited. <laughs> then with my older students, sometimes I'll tell them that I'm going to be the leader and they have to follow me. Now this goes over great, but I may walk like, like in a, a zigzag line and I tell them they, they have to do what I do. They can't say anything extra. If I'm talking, they that can talk. That keeps them focused on what you're yes. doing. And yeah. and yeah. So I'll walk. I may walk backwards for a minute or two. I may, or a second or two. And then, yeah, they have to watch what we're that doing. That is so cool. And those are great ideas, and I'm going to start using some of those because I think the kids would love that, too. It's a lot yeah. of fun for the kids. It is fun. So those extra little touches. Yeah. Now, can we now get to Do you want to now keep talking? Now you can go. Don't rush me. Now you can go. Okay. So, um, my pick of the day is an object lesson. I bought these glasses for, I think I got 50, 50 of oh, them yeah. for like $15 or something. For an object lesson, we did a lesson on, um, I can see it your way. I can see it your way. Yeah. So this was uh, an object lesson that where the kids put the glasses on and we talked about seeing clearly and we talked about you know we think we can see everything but we have these little bars that keep us from seeing completely clearly and when other people we're looking at other people and we think that we know them or see them but yet there are those things that we may not be aware of that mm -hmm. we need to be careful and, and be empathetic toward the things that people may be going to going through Very kind of like walk in your shoes or empathy, seeing through yeah. my eyes. So it was, our, it was an empathy lesson. But these were great, and they absolutely loved Aww. wearing these glasses. So Good. that's my pick. Uh, great little object lesson. And, I, you know, I don't know what else I can use these for, but I am sure oh, there's going to be something. more things. My pick of the week is something that I used to hate, but now I love it. And that is, and I know it sounds simple, but it's a flip book. And I cannot tell you, I was nearly in tears. Kim <laughs> made this and sent it to me, and oh. I couldn't figure out how to print it. I couldn't uh. figure it out. But I made it, and I used... And you still printed it wrong the first time, but we're getting it. Yeah. But um, I used this with our behavior small group. This flip book, or just flip books in general, are the best thing for small groups. They are wonderful. Um, because every activity, it was a... Actually, a six-week small And it was group. on behaviors. It was on behaviors. Mm -hmm. And so each week, I don't have to print more activities. They're right here. I kept them in a folder in a binder. And so each week, I just pulled them out. Yes, and it's great. I it's don't, wonderful. I cannot thank you enough for creating a okay. flip book. Okay, you're and so welcome. Changing me. I, well, for small groups, because uh, we used to have a notebook for each child. Yeah. And... You know, everything is in the book. Everything that we need is here. It's right there. If you and have not made a flip book and found a love for flip books, let is just everything we need is here. There is a learning curve in putting it together, I'm going to be honest. But once I got it, and then it, you see, oh, that was so easy. Yeah. So uh, this is this was really this yeah. was really a good one. Yeah. Okay. Good pick. Now okay. Good cat pick. My cat pick is us. It's it's how I feel we are. Everywhere mm -hmm. we go, we are into something. We just, I don't and know. we end up looking like. We, like. yeah. I mean, I cannot think of a better descriptor than us. Are you the one turned around backwards or the one looking like? you got to explain to those who can't see what you're talking about. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. It is two cats that are, you know, those... Um, it's a window, but it has paper behind it. So yes. it's like a paper window. 
One of the cats is stuck in backwards, and the other is between two window panes and <laughs> looking like, what? Going in and out. Going? Yeah. 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 So. So we've broke through the window pane. We're stuck, and yeah. we got body parts hanging out. That is that is That's us. us. So I don't know if this is us, but I know which one I would be. I'd be the one saying, I wish you'd wear a bra. Okay. This is inappropriate. This, this is the stinking funniest. It is like this mad, hairless cat. And I'm not kidding you. This, If you could put a bra on a cat, this one would need it. And the other cat's looking and going, I wish you'd wear a bra. Have we not said that before to other people? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we have. So anyway, that was my cat pick my sister sent to me. So we've done our fat laugh. We've done our pick of the week. We've done our cat pick of the week. And I don't think we need to do a tip tool or technique because this think whole thing was. We have tipped enough today. We've tooled We're tipsy and, with tips. Can I say that? I don't know if you can. Okay. Okay. Um, join our Facebook group if you haven't already. It is a place just to share things like this. And so if you have questions, it is a safe place to ask those questions. Go find us on Instagram. Tag us in some things that you're doing because we would love to see and get new ideas. And you could be the listener of the week. I know. What is like, ah! You'll get a ticket for a door prize. <laughs> <laughs> anything else we need to tell him? I don't. I can't think of anything. Okay. So. All right. Well, bye.